Do you know how to implement the factory design pattern in Java? Hi, my name is Sean from Campbell Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to implement the factory design pattern in Java. The factory pattern is one of the most used design patterns in Java. It is part of the creational design patterns that forms part of 23 famous design patterns known as the Gang of Four design patterns. Now, the Gang of Four name comes from the four authors of a book called Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, and their names are Eric Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson, and John Blasides. I do recommend this book if you want more insights into all 23 design patterns. But in this video, we'll focus on the factory design pattern only. The purpose of the factory pattern is to allow us to create objects without exposing the creation logic to the client and refer to newly created objects using a common interface. Now, if this doesn't make sense just yet, do not despair because the code will clarify it for you. But before we jump into the code, let's look at a UML class diagram. Here, you'll see that we have a payment interface with a pay method. And then we have three concrete implementations, including a credit card payment, a PayPal payment, and a Google Pay payment. And then you'll also see that we have a payment factory. Now, this is the most important part of this class diagram that you should note. The payment factory is indeed responsible for creating the objects based on a specific key, which will be a payment method enum in our case. And then based on the value of that enum, the factory will decide what implementation to return to the client code. Now for the part that you've all been waiting for, the actual code. So here we have a simple Java project with a main class. So the first thing that we are going to do is to implement that payment interface that you saw in the UML class diagram. So let's go ahead and create a new interface and call it payment. It's only going to have a single method that returns void and let's call the method pay. It's going to take in a single parameter of type big decimal and let's call it amount. Obviously, when you are working with money, big decimal is much better than double, for example, because of its precision. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to create our three implementations. So let's go ahead and create three classes. The first class that we are going to create, we can call credit card payment. Let's create all three for now. The second one, PayPal payment. And the last class there, we can call Google Pay payment. So let's go ahead and implement the credit card payment class first. Let's implement the payment interface, and then we need to implement the pay method. Now, as you can imagine, a credit card integration logic could be quite complex, but we are going to simply print out a message to indicate that we are in fact using the credit card payment class when the factory returns a new credit card payment instance. So let's say system.out.println and then I'm going to format the message with the message format class. So say message format dot format. And then let's print out a message something like successfully paid and then use the dollar sign and then curly brackets zero and curly brackets so that's obviously the first occurrence of the format parameter that we'll pass in and then say to merchant using a credit card and remember to also pass in the amount as our parameter there okay so as you can imagine all three of our implementations will look similar so let's copy everything up to the implements keyword there the next concrete implementation that we are going to implement is the PayPal payment. So let's paste it there and it's our PayPal payment class. So we'll simply change the message to successfully paid dollar to merchant using PayPal. 
Okay, and now let's go and implement our third concrete implementation, the Google Pay payment. And again, we can simply paste the code there and change the message to Google Pay. The amount to merchant using Google Pay. All right, so now that we have all of our concrete implementations, we can go ahead and create an enum class. Let's call it payment method. And here we can add our different payment methods. We can start with credit card as our first option. Our second payment method option is PayPal. And then finally, Google Pay. All right. And then we can go ahead and create our factory class. Call the class payment factory. And then it's only going to have a single method our factory method as we call it and it's going to be a static method so say public static and it returns the payment interface call it create and then it's going to take in a single parameter payment method that'll be our factory key as it's called and then we'll use a switch statement to determine which implementation of the payment interface we should instantiate so as our first case statement there we can say if the payment method enum is credit card, we'll return a new instance of credit card payment. In IntelliJ, you can simply click and say create missing branches and it will add cases for all of the enum options, including PayPal and Google Pay. So if it's PayPal, we'll return new PayPal payment. And if it's Google Pay, we'll return new Google payment. Now, you might ask what happens if there's a new enum option, but we haven't yet added support. And that's why we'll use the default statement there. And we'll say if it's default, in other words, none of the supported case statements there, we'll throw a new class not found exception and we'll use the message format class again. So say message format dot format and then we'll say zero which will be the payment method is not currently supported as a payment method and then pass in the payment method parameter there importantly we need to either handle or add the exception to our method signature so that's what we are going to do right so now we have a payment factory with a factory method that is called create that takes in a payment method as the parameter or factory method key there. If it is credit card, it will return a new instance of credit card payment. For PayPal, new instance of PayPal payment. If it's Google Pay, new instance of Google Pay payment. And if we haven't catered for it in our switch statement here, we'll throw a new class not found exception. We'll say that that given payment method is not currently supported. Okay, so now let's write our client code in our main method here in the main class. So we'll say payment, our payment interface. Let's call it payment equals payment factory and then invoke the create method, our factory method. And this is obviously a static method, so we don't need to create a new instance of payment factory because it in fact is returning an instance of our desired concrete payment class. And that is why a static method is in fact recommended here. And then we need to pass in the payment method. So let's pass in the credit card here. All right, we need to handle the exception, the class not found exception, as you can recall, and we'll handle it in a try catch. And then the next thing we need to do is to actually invoke the pay method on the payment interface and it requires the amount that we want to pay so let's say new big decimal and we'll pass in a thousand dollars there all right so let's debug through our code so there it hits the create method you'll see the payment method is credit card hits the credit card case and returns a new instance of credit card payment then we invoke the pay method on the payment interface and there you'll see it actually hits the pay method in the credit card payment class and then there in the console you'll see that we 
print out the message successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using a credit card. Now let's change the payment method to PayPal. Now maybe pause here for a second. You might say, hang on, you said the client code will not change. Now remember, this is just some sample client code, but normally the client code would, for example, be a REST controller, and then the payment method will be passed to the RESTful API, or it will be passed via a user interface or the terminal by a user. So that's why we can say that the client code won't change and that a factory method actually provides this awesome abstraction that you can simply add new payment methods without having to change the client logic. All right, so let's change it to PayPal as the payment method. Again, let's debug. It hits our PayPal case. It returns a new instance of PayPal payment. And when it invokes the pay method, it hits the PayPal payment classes pay method. And we print out successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using PayPal. Okay, let's change it to Google Pay. Now this time I'm not going to debug because you get the point. Let's simply run it. And as you can see there, successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using Google Pay. Okay, now let's say we go and add a new enum value. Let's call it Apple Pay, right? But at the moment, let's not create the concrete implementation nor modify our factory method. So let's change the payment method to Apple Pay, right? Let's debug quickly and then you'll see that it doesn't find a case for Apple Pay and then it throws the class not found exception and then it hits our catch. We print the stack trace and there it says Apple Pay is not currently supported as a payment method, right? But let's go and add support to show you how simple it is to add a new payment method without having to change the client code. So let's create a new class, call it Apple Pay Payment. We can go ahead and copy the code from the credit card payment because it's going to look similar, as you know by now. And let's paste it there. And then we can simply change successfully pay to merchant using Apple Pay. All right, so let's debug our code this time. And I think you already know this is not going to work. And the reason why is because we haven't added a case for Apple Pay to our payment factory. So it again hits our exception. So let's just go ahead and stop our debug session and add a case for Apple Pay. Right, if it's Apple Pay, we are going to return a new instance of Apple Pay payment. Okay, so now let's debug again. This time it hits our Apple Pay case, it returns an instance of Apple Pay payment. And when we invoke the pay method, it hits the pay method in the Apple Pay payment class and it prints out the message successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using Apple Pay. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to implement the factory design pattern in Java. Let's quickly look at the UML class diagram again. I'm sure this time, if it hasn't made sense up front, it'll make complete sense now. The payment factory returns the given concrete implementation of the payment interface based on the payment method enum value that is passed to the factory. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.